Hi, welcome back to Bexhill West. I'm James. You can see in front of me here, I've got the collection of various buildings that I've constructed so far for the project. We've got the engine shed, station building, signal box number one, signal box number two, and currently I've been working on the good shed, which is still just propped up at the moment. Pieces have all not been joined together yet. One of the things that's been mostly preoccupying my time has been painting the brickwork and uh, experimenting to try and achieve the finish that I'm after. So today's short video is a little look at the very simple process that I use to achieve this painted effect that you can see here. I hope you enjoy it. Now before we get started it's worth mentioning that if you look at buildings and structures uh, up and down the country and not just in railway locations you'll see that bricks are arranged in a variety of different patterns or brick bonds. So for the purposes of this demonstration I've prepared just five different swatches. Each swatch has a different brick bond pattern on so not only will we be able to look at this technique as a whole at the end we'll be able to compare these different patterns and see how they look and maybe have a quick chat about where one would expect to find these different brick bonds on what types of structures and so forth. Okay, so there's no real rocket science to this part. I'm just using some filler, which I've decanted into a little tub. I'll put a, a description of the filler on the screen. I've got a flat paintbrush, not a particularly good one, but it works well. And I've got a little bit of water. The water is quite useful just to just to wet the brush. I don't want it soaking wet, but just just damp. Just dry it slightly on a bit of towel. Get some filler. And this really isn't rocket science, it's just a case of brushing it into the part so it fills all of the cracks. Couldn't be easier. I find a bit of water helps it to flow. We don't want too much, however, we're using MDF, so we don't want the material to swell up. But I just brush it in something like that and then get my paper towel and wipe the excess away and then i'll leave that to sit for a couple of minutes and i'll come back to it in a second i'll just quickly whiz through and get the remaining pieces done
And there we have it. There's our five little swatches all done. And already, we're only halfway through the process, but already, hopefully, you can see that brick detail coming on quite nicely. And what's quite nice, if I was to run my fingernail down it, you can hear that. But we've got the texture as well. When we look up close, you really can see the difference between the bricks and the mortar. So after a few minutes, the filler started to dry. If we have a look at the surface of what we've done, we can see we've got all sorts of grey patches. The sort of the filler is still lingering about. Once it's dried up a bit more, I find it tends to polish off quite easily. Occasionally, I'll just give it a bit of a wipe. So what I've done here off camera is I've just taken a piece of paper towel, I've just dipped it into that glass of water that I had. And we can just give the surface a bit of a polish, a bit like if we were grouting tiles in the kitchen, just helps wash away any excess filler from the surface and brings the redness of the bricks back out. Although, to be honest with you, every time I do this, it seems to go grey again, and I wonder if it's really necessary. But there we go. There's our five different brick bonds. OK, on with stage three. So for stage three, I'm going to use this product. It's a Vallejo Game Wash Pale Grey. And generally speaking, all I do is decant a little bit into a bit of old packaging. And I literally just paint it over the surface that we've just prepared. Now I've got plenty here, so I'll do this one as well. And then just as we did with the filler, once it's on there, I'll wipe it all the way. Now I like to, with the first wash, take off almost all that I've put on and build this up slowly. Now obviously we could use different coloured washes. And increase, you know, change the change the mortar colour or lighten it or darken it. So what I'll do is I'll finish the others off camera, maybe give a couple two coats of washes and then you can see where we're at. And here's the end product. I hope the camera will pick this up, but the, the result was really quite pleasing. The stretcher bond has had two washes, the others are just the one wash. Now this would be the standard of finish that I would take all my brickwork to prior to the final weathering processes and, and what have you. Obviously different buildings will weather differently, but that's a really nice effect. So I said we'd talk briefly about where we might find these different brick patterns. Well, stretcher bond, which is perhaps the bond we're most familiar with, this is what most domestic buildings or you know, houses and what have you are built with. This produces a wall which is only half a brick thick or four inches wide or 100 millimetres. However, back in the day and on structural applications where a four brick width wall or, or beyond nine inches and greater then you would tend to see either Flemish bond which is this one here where the courses alternate between um, stretcher which is the long face of the brick and the header which is the short end face so it goes stretcher header stretcher header and so on that's Flemish bond but for the ultimate strength, 
the strongest bond is English bond. And here you will see you have a course of stretches, and then on top of that a course of headers, and that pattern repeats. Now if you're using Flemish bond or stretcher bond, you will end up with on your corners these tiny bricks, which I hope you can see here, they're called queen closers. And then in an application where maybe you want a wall that is one brick thick or nine inches, um, you can save bricks if it's not a structural application with the English or the Flemish garden wall bond. And if we have a look at English garden wall, you'll see we have three courses of stretchers and then a row of headers, three stretchers and a row of headers. Flemish garden wall. This one's slightly harder to see. I hope the camera will pick it up. In this case, we've got three stretchers, a header, three stretchers, a header, and that pattern repeats for each course of the wall. Now, as it happens on my engine shed, the Flemish garden wall bond that was on the original building was two stretchers and a header. So you'll see variations of these patterns everywhere. And one of the things that could really make your model stand out as being accurate is to have a close look at old photographs and do your very best to try and replicate these patterns in their correct locations on your structures. So these five brick bond patterns here can all be found in one location or another on the old Bexhill West station and its associated buildings. So that's why I produced these. And so there you have it. I hope you'll agree it's a fairly straightforward process, three simple steps, almost impossible to get it wrong. It just works well and it works every time. As an alternative to the Humbrol number 70 brick red enamel, I do sometimes use the Vallejo um, Model Air Brown. I can use that in, a, in an airbrush. It also works very, very well. I would tend, however, with an acrylic paint to blast some matte varnish over it first of all and seal it. That helps when you come to wipe the, the filler off, it just doesn't wipe all the paint off. Um, however, I tend to avoid that process only because it adds that extra varnish step and slows me down. It does work quite nicely actually as, a, as an extra thought to mix and match. So maybe there'll be some patches within the brickwork where I might use the different paint. And just when it's all done, it, it, it just gives a bit of variety, a bit of variegation, if that's the right word, across the brickwork. Something to remember also is those browns, when they go on, will be very strong. Once you've got the filler on and you've run the wash, it tends to come up a lot lighter. So I don't know if the camera picked it up, but that Humbrol number 70 went from being a proper brick red to almost an orangey, um, or certainly orange tones in there, which is exactly what I was after. Of course, that all gets lost when you put the grey wash over, but that gradual building up of the tonal variation is what I think makes the, the technique so successful. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. There will be plenty more to come. If you have enjoyed it, please consider subscribing and certainly leave a, a comment below. It'd be nice to hear from you. And until next time, take care. Bye bye.